I don't have to worry. But if I ain't got the Holy Ghost in me to teach me that and to keep me in check, I'll wind up a goofing up. But I've got the Holy Ghost in me. I've got him in me. And when I don't know how to handle things, I can just let him pray through me. When I read this book here, it'd be impossible for me to understand some things in here. But he'll make it so plain to you. He'll just show you and teach you. It, it ain't no wonder, and, I, and it, you can't hardly blame a lot of times people. I mean, you might be able to blame them. People get as alias, just like it says in the 10th chapter of Romans, the first verse thing is, Paul said, uh, talking about the scribes and the Israelites and so forth, he said, they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. A lot of people's got a zeal for God and want to see God save people, want to see things go good. But they, they explain away a lot of stuff in this book because they've not got the, the, the teacher in them. The teacher ain't in them. If you ain't got the teacher in you, you ain't got nobody to teach you. It even says in one place in the Bible, Kenneth, it says that when we have the Holy Spirit, the teacher in us, that we need no man to teach us. Because he teaches us all things. Hallelujah. I mean, ain't that good? It's good to have somebody. If everybody here was a teacher, it's good to everybody let's take time and listen to each other. But you don't have to have somebody, what it's a saying in the Greek, you don't have to depend on somebody to teach you every little thing. Because you've got the teacher in you. I don't have to, you know, we have to go through channels. If we wanted to see a dignitary, you've got to go through uh, proper channels to be able to make appointments and meetings to get there. That's what it's saying. You don't have to do that. You've got him in you. He lives in us. Hallelujah. Ain't that, I mean, that's good news to me. If we would all, people are watching on TV, people listening on the radio, everybody, everywhere, if we would just be honest with the Scripture... I mean, not, not me. I, it don't make no difference if you argued with me forever. But if you would take heed and start esteeming this word highly and say, bless God, I'm not going to let the devil cheat me no more. I'm through letting him tear me down and cause me to have to try to stand and explain why that, that this ain't happening and that ain't happening. How come this and the word don't work? We need to have the whole word. We don't need to just tire and throw out whatever we don't want. But when we've got the spirit of truth in us, the Holy Spirit to teach us, we can have a whole new outlook on this book. Amen? He, bring, he brings it to life. Brings it to life. I mean, you don't have to beg God, and say, oh God, please do this, please do that. The Holy Ghost will teach us. I mean, like the book of Romans says on down there, it says that we are not supposed to say, who's going to send into the heaven? That is to bring Christ down again from above. What do we do a lot of times? What does people do? I mean, and I, I'm not, I, I hope I, my spirit is not mean in no way. I hope I'm not sound like that. But a lot of times we'll pray and you can hear people in churches Oh, God, please just come down and heal so-and-so. God, please come down and meet this family's need. Oh, God, please come down and take care of them. It says in the book of Romans, the 10th chapter, that the righteousness which is of faith, and that's who we are, speaketh on this wise. Say not in your heart, who's going to send into heaven, that is to bring Jesus down from above. Who's going to descend into the heart of the earth or into the grave to bring him back from the dead? But what saith the righteousness which is of faith? What does it say? Hallelujah. What does the righteousness which is of faith say? The word of God is now you. Listen, it's now you. It's now me. It's in my heart and in your heart and in your mouth. He said the word is now you even in your heart and in your mouth. That is the word of faith. 
which Kenneth Gross preaches, that if you would speak and agree with the word, that's what that word confess in the Greek means, homologio or homologos, if you would agree with what the scripture says in your heart and speak that out of your mouth, that you'd be saved. And that don't mean being born again. It means soteria, sozo. It can mean being born again, but what he's talking about here, you don't have to say, God, if it be your will, take care of this. God, come down and do this. He's saying, hush up. The word is in you. It's in your heart, in your mouth. If you will just speak what the Holy Ghost has put in you and speak to them problems and tell them to get out of your way in the name of Jesus and agree with my word and speak it out of your mouth, you'll be sozoed. You'll be delivered. Hallelujah. I'm getting a little excited. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The word is nigh you. It's nigh you. It's in your heart and in your mouth. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 